So the constitution may be in some form of jeopardy. One incentives for military rule appear to be present. So that is where the worry and the danger is. The idea that we may be in danger of military rule because the military may sense the opportunity, or rather the opportunism, for intervening. But it's important for us to also remember that we have had a history of military rules that have gone nowhere. Military rule has always at best been palliative to problems. They come with the expectation or sometimes the pretension to solve the problem, but they are never, they are never able to solve them. And the four episodes of military rule in the past testify to this. Secondly, what you mentioned about the people or some people yearning for some form of military rule in governance, not a full blown military rule. Mm. There is no such thing. And the reality is the military have had uh, the experience of just not being good at limited intervention. And I think in Ghana, uh, for those who know, know about the experience with the uh, Union government, of course, it was rejected. But the mm. fact that the reason why it was rejected was because the understanding was clear that the military is just not uh, a part-time player. They are either fully in charge or they are out of it. And so I can understand the frustration, and it's important to put this in context. When we turned to the civilian role in 1992, indeed 1993, when the election was held and the new government installed, there was an expectation that the people will not have a say by way of representative democracy. The whole concept of representative democracy is that somebody represents another. And by reason of that, there's an agency relationship that is established. That agency relationship implies that the principal are the people of Ghana, and the agent um, is the government. What we have had is that the relationship and the link between the principal and the agent has been broken. And the reason it has been broken is because the principal tends to act in its own interest and sometimes at its own behest. The institutions of states that have been established to promote representative democracy have been appropriated by the political parties, and that's where the other problem is. So you have a situation in which the political parties elect government into office, but they sort the mandate of the people. Mm-hmm. But once elections are conducted, government tends to rule virtually almost exclusively in the interest of the political parties. So these political parties essentially dictate the pace, and because of expectation of elections, Government also constantly listens to these parties because if it's a president, it's an expectation of a second term, mm. the party has to nominate him. Um, the party is an expectation of the people in electing them, and so policy must reflect politi- political and electioneering expectations. Mm. You have all these configurations and sometimes distortions that have, as it were, completely jeopardized the expectations <laughs> of the 1992 constitution. So that's the reason why a lot of people are now, or some people may be calling for the military intervention because they are romanticizing. Hmm. Romanticizing with some of the things that may have happened in the 80s and perhaps the 70s. And a large chunk of the demography of the voters today were not people who were alive or who were around when hmm. the last military intervention took place. So they have heard of things. And the kinds of things they may have heard of may be romantic in character uh, because today there's so much indiscipline and so much chaos and so much corruption. And when they hear of things that happen in June 4th, um, and then in the military areas of the Hello? military can now cure the excesses. Mm. But it's important for us to know that all these four episodes failed to cure the fundamental problems for which they intervened. Indeed.